our last section, we covered the addition rule for probability, and now we're moving on to what we call the multiplication rule for probability. And the way we want to think of this is when we are performing a series of tasks, so making selections in sequence, it's how we'll know that the multiplication rule will apply. So I'll be taking a look at this example where we adopt a cat, that's my first task, and then the next thing I'll do is adopt a dog, and we'll go through this example in a moment. So the tasks in sequence. Now, when we perform a selection of a cat and then a selection of a dog, those events are going to be what we call independent of one another. So in other words, the cat I pick will have no influence over which dog is chosen. So independent events, the choice of one has no influence over the choice of the next. And then we'll talk about dependent events in a bit, but let's start with independent events. And what I'm gonna do is talk about here, my five cats that are up for adoption. One is white and four are black. I have four dogs up for adoption, three are apricot and one is red. If you've never heard of an apricot dog, um, Chester, my dog is called apricot. So there you go. All right, so we are gonna pick a cat at random and then pick a dog at random. So what we'll do is organize every single possible cat dog combination by drawing what we call a probability tree for these outcomes. All right, so let me start with the choice of cat. So on a tree diagram, we call that the root. And then there's gonna be two possibilities. We're either gonna end up randomly picking the one white cat. So I'll just put the one white cat and let's just do W for white. And I'm gonna put the probability of going in that direction. There's one white cat out of five. So there's a one in five chance I end up on what we call that branch of the tree. And then on the other hand, if we randomly pick a cat, it could be black. And that is the other four out of those five cats. All right, so we call that the first level of the tree. I now have chosen my cat. And then we'll go on to choose a dog. So it doesn't matter which cat was chosen. When we look at the probability of, we'll go with apricot. The chances of getting an apricot dog, regardless of what cat was chosen, there are three apricot out of four dogs. So let's go A for apricot. So I might get apricot and that branch, we have a three and four chance of going down that branch of our tree. So I'll just write down that outcome. So in that situation, we got a white cat and then, and we just say and, but you'll hear me speak it, and then um, an apricot dog. So a white cat and an apricot dog. So we're just keeping track of the cat that was selected and the dog that was selected. Okay, so let me just finish the tree. So if I got a white cat, one out of five, and then the other option for the dog, I might get the red one. And so I might get red. So three of, out of four are apricot and one, of that, one out of those four is red. So in that situation, I'd have a white cat and a red dog. All right, and then let's go to cat being black. So I might get a black cat. And then again, I might get an apricot dog. So again, that's always three out of four. So apricot and then red, there was one dog out of four. So what I'm doing is following the tree here and listing all possibilities. So black cat and an apricot dog, or I could get a black cat and a red dog. All right, so that's every possibility in terms of the colors. And then what I'll do here is add now the probability of each of those events occurring. So basically the multiplication rule just says the proportion of the time you end up at the end of the tree. So one out of five, and then we multiply. So one fifth of the time will go this direction and then three fourths of that. So times three fourths, for the apricot dog. And I'll just say in fraction, there's a three in 20 chance I end up with a white cat and an apricot dog. 
All right, let's go this branch. So a one fifth chance of white cat times red, a one fourth chance of getting a red dog. So that is a one in 20 chance. And then we'll finish our tree here, a four in five chance of a black cat times a three in four chance of an apricot dog, 12 out of 20. And then finally, a four in five chance of a black cat times a one in four chance of a black, I'm sorry, of a red dog, too many colors here, four out of 20. Okay, I'm gonna check that I didn't make any mistakes because if I add those probabilities together, so I'm gonna add the probabilities together and I'm staying in fraction here. So a three in 20 chance of that first outcome plus one in 20 for the second, 12 and 20 for the third, four and 20 for the fourth. So if one of those color combinations is guaranteed to happen, we should get 20 out of 20. So three plus one is four, plus 12 is 16, plus another four is 20, we did it. There's a 20 in 20 chance, or in decimal, a chance of one, or in percent, there's a 100% chance you're gonna end up with one of those color combinations for your cat and your dog. Okay, so the tree just sort of illustrates this process. We won't have to list every single possibility every time we do a problem. So let me just address it here with just one question. Find the probability that you select a white cat and then an apricot dog. And I'll write the rule here. So when we perform tasks in sequence, we take the probability of the first event, white cat, we multiply by the probability of the second event, the apricot dog. That rule applies when events are independent of one another. And again, we'll return to that idea of independent and compare it to dependent in a moment. Okay, so looking at the given information, I know we have a whole tree here, but just looking at the given information, I'm just gonna do some highlighting here. The probability of a white cat is one out of five times the probability of an apricot dog, my second task, picking a dog, and three out of those four are apricot. And then I will substitute. So we would just do our cat first, white, one in five chance, times apricot dog, three of the four. And then when we multiply, multiply fractions, we multiply across numerator, denominator, and of course, throughout today and any time when you're dealing with probability, we can always do fraction, decimal, or percent. So it will be indicated which one um, we want if it is um, in the directions they would indicate it. Otherwise, we can just practice all three here for a moment. So there's a 15% 15, 15 chance I get a white cat and then I get an apricot dog. All right, so let's take a look again at this idea of independent events. And we're gonna do this example of what we call sampling items with replacement. So let's talk about what that means. So over here, I have a bag of marbles. Two of those marbles are blue, four of them are red. And what we're going to do is remove a marble from the bag, we'll record its color, but then we'll put it right back into that bag. So sampling with replacement means, I'm gonna draw a little picture here. It means if you take out a marble, then you're just gonna put it right back in. So in other words, if there's two blue and four red, I'm gonna just do N here for the number of possibilities. We have six marbles in the bag. So if I take one out and put it back, there will always be six marbles in that bag. So let's take a look at this example. So what are the what is the probability? The first one we pick is blue. So we take out a marble, it happens to be blue, and then we put it right back in the bag. And then we pick another marble and we want the probability the second one is also blue. So the multiplication rule says when you perform tasks in sequence, pick a marble and then you pick another one. 
you can just multiply. I'm going to switch to a little asterisk here. Multiply the probability of one event times the probability of the next. So the events are called independent because the probability of getting a blue the first time, two out of six are blue. So if we take out a blue marble and then we put that blue marble right back in, then there will always be two marbles out of six that are blue. So in other words, picking a blue one the first time has no effect over the chances of getting blue again. The probability of blue will never change if you keep taking things out and putting them back. So this is this idea of independent events. And I'm just going to stay in fraction again. So I'll multiply numerators, multiply denominators, and I'm just going to leave it like that. All right, so why don't we try the probability I get a blue one first and then, so you always multiply and then the chance the next one is red. So we've got two out of six that are blue. So we basically look at the blue one, we put it right back in the bag. And then when we pick our next marble, so there's still six marbles and four of those are red. So there's always going to be a four and six chance of red because anything we pick is going to be put back in the bag. So let's try this again. So the probability, oops, the probability of red and then getting a blue, so times the probability of a blue. So red, there's four red out of six marbles. So again, probability of red will always be four out of six, no matter what, if we're gonna look at that red one. So we take a red one, we say, hey, you're red, and we put it right back. And then the chance the next one is blue, there will always be two blue out of those six marbles. So eight out of 36. And then finally, we could get a red followed by a red. So probability of red followed by red. Four out of six marbles are red. We look at the marble that's red and we put it right back. So if we put that bar marble back, there will still be four red out of those six. So 16 out of 36. And if you were to add those probabilities together, we would have to get one because one of these things is guaranteed to happen. So. For this problem, again, I listed all possibilities. So if we, we were to add the probabilities, the sum is 36 out of 36 or one. So there's a 100% chance that you're gonna get blue, blue or blue, red or red, blue or red, red. So we're going to come back to that idea in the next chapter where we list everything possible and know that if we add those probabilities, we get one. But we will not always again be doing every single case. So that is the idea of sampling with events that are independent. So what affects what happens on the first choice has no influence of the probability of the next choice, because in the case of marbles, you're never changing the content of the bag, and that's what makes independent events.